So in this video, we're going to talk about recursion in Prolog. To do that, let's start with factorial. So uh, we're always going to have a base case. And for factorial, if we are given factorial of 1, then we're going to have 1 as the result. Then my recursive case, I'm going to get n and I'm going to return the factorial of n. But what I'm going to want to do is, first off, I, I want to say factorial of n is n times factorial of n minus 1. So I'm going to need to do some additional work here. First off, I need to get n minus 1. So now that's in variable n1. I need to get the factorial of n minus 1. So that's the factorial of n minus 1. And then I need to multiply n times the factorial of n minus 1. So that's my rule. Now this is essentially saying n1 equals n minus 1. This is n minus 1 factorial. And this is n times n minus 1 factorial. So let's see how that works. And we can see I get the answer. Now, it does prompt me for an additional answer. And this is probably going to go on forever, so I need to stop that. And the reason for that is, is that eventually, when this case, when I when I reject this base case, then it says, okay, well, I'll subtract one from n. So actually, to be safe, it might be a good idea to say n is greater than one. And so that sort of ensures that I don't have this infinite loop. So now let's consult again. And now, if I ask it for additional answers, it says false. It can't find anything else. So the way uh, recursion works is, remember that prolog searches from top down. So it's going to see this rule. If that doesn't work, then it'll try to find another rule. And so it'll do this recursive case. Here, I make a recursive call. And it will try to unify n1 and f1 before it proceeds on to the next computation. But once it does, then it'll come here and check to see, or, or try to calculate f based on n and f1. Okay, so now let's look at a recursive definition. Not just of addition and, and multiplication, uh, like we did with scheme, but let's actually do a recursive definition of numbers themselves. 0 is a number. Then the successor of a number is a number. And notice here we're treating the successor as a, as a function. Any number can be represented this way because, for example, 2 is the successor of 1, which is the successor of 0. So it's a number. So to add two numbers, first off, my base case, if I add 0 to x, I just get x. And that's also true if if I add 0 to a number, I still get x. But I need both rules because I don't know where the 0 is going to be. If I add the successor of x and y, I'm going to get the successor of z, where I'm adding x and y 
to get z. So the way this works is, if I add some successor of x to y, then that means the result is the, the successor of adding x to y. And just like before, I also could have this second number be a number with a successor. So let's consult. And we have a syntax error on line 68, column 39. Ah, I don't have a closing parentheses here. That should fix it. Now I can't add 3 and 4. And to get x. But I can add the successor of the successor of the successor of 0. And I need 1, 2, 3 closing parameters. And that's 3. And this is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that'll yield x. So notice here I get the successor of the successor of the successor of the successor, blah, 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 zero. And so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm doing addition using just recursion. There's nothing else. There's not even any arithmetic operations involved here. Literally, recursion is the only thing I'm doing. Let's write a few more recursive rules. And here we're going to set up a family set of facts. So Bob is the father of Alice. Sue is the mother of James, Sue is the mother of Alice, and Anne is the mother of Sue. Then we have some rules, dad xy if father xy, parent xy if father xy, or parent xy if mother is of xy. So that means that whether x is the mother or father of y, they're the parent, either one rules. And then the child reverses the parent relationship. Now let's say we want to do an ancestor rule. Okay, so A is the ancestor of D if A is the parent of D. Now that just gives us one level. So to get the additional levels of being an ancestor, we'll have a recursive rule. A is the ancestor of D if ancestor of AX that X is the ancestor of A. So let's, let's try that rule and see what happens. And I have a singleton variable. So let's fix that because I definitely don't want that. Ah, this should be D. X is an ancestor of D. Okay, so we've consulted. Now, let's ask if Alice or Bob is an ancestor of Alice. That's true. But then notice when I rejected that, it kind of hung for a while. So let's try this. How about ancestor and James? Now, if you go back and look at the code, Anne is the mother of Sue and Sue is the mother of James. So that should hold the ancestor relation. And that's true. So now let's check to see if Bob is the ancestor of Sue. I, I don't think those will be ancestors because they both seem to have the same descendant. So and we have a infinite recursion. So the reason this is happening, I'll control C out of there. The reason that's happening is because this ancestor rule we're just trying to find an ancestor ax and there's a lot of those but then when we when we do this relationship we're saying ancestor xd well finding either of these rules notice if there's not a parent relationship then this says look for something else where 
that ancestor X is the ancestor of D. So I'm just going to keep trying all these combinations and eventually I'll get to a point where I'm flipping back and forth between two ancestor rules. And that's not going to be helpful. So to fix this, I can say parent AX and that grounds this first rule using the parent, this, this, this first uh, clause using the parent rule. And so that way I'm only calling ancestor one time. So I don't get into a case where I'm going down some search path that I'm never going to find something that works. So let's consult and let's see ancestor Bob Sue is false and Sister and James is true. And if I say no, it's going to say false because, okay, well, I found one path of ancestry, but that's it. We can do something similar with graphs. So we'll have some facts. That'll be a list of edges in a directed graph. So now I can do algorithms on, on this graph. So for example, I can say a graph is connected if there's an edge from node 1 to node 2. Or if there's an edge from some node X or node one to node X and node X is connected to node two. So if I consult, let's see what A is connected to. It's connected to B, C, D, E, D, F. And you'll notice I'm getting some repeats because that's, again, it's, it's basically finding a path from A to B, then C to D. Here we have a repeat because it found a different path to D than we found originally. 